This video is about the Italian royal family and the interesting question of who would be the king of Italy today, as well as the probably more relevant question of why is a mozzarella and tomato pizza called a margarita, and will this man ever be king of Italy? It's hard to think of Italy as a monarchy these days. When did you last hear anyone talk about the king of Italy? It's not even the name of an English pub, and yet it wasn't that long ago. My mother was born a subject in the Kingdom of Italy before becoming a citizen of the Italian Republic in 1946. The first king of Italy was Victor Emmanuel II. Italy was united under the royal family of Savoy, a small kingdom at the foot of the Alps with Turin as its capital, and they didn't even bother resetting the clock for the united Italy, so the first king of Italy was Victor Emmanuel II. Although his name and statue are everywhere in Italy, he was hugely lucky that the Republican Garibaldi literally gave him the south of Italy to secure a united Italy in 1861. I've done videos on the history of Italy with links in the description below. Victor Emmanuel's son was Umberto, who, if he's remembered at all, is known for his truly splendid moustache and being assassinated by anarchists in 1900. However, his wife, Queen Margarita, is remembered by all of us in the form of the pizza margarita. There isn't conclusive evidence of this, but there are contemporary newspaper reports of her eating pizza in Naples, which would have been unusual for the Queen to do at that time. Given public sympathy for the recently widowed Queen, I suspect the story may actually be true. The next time you're enjoying your pizza, please bear in mind that Queen Margherita distrusted democracy and was an early sympathiser of Benito Mussolini. This may have had an impact on her son, Victor Emmanuel III, who appointed Mussolini as his Prime Minister and was king throughout the 20 years of fascism. This is him on the right with the much taller King of Belgium. He was so tainted by fascism that towards the end of the Second World War, the Allies persuaded him to hand over most of his powers to his son, Umberto. A referendum was held in June 1946 in which around 54% of Italians voted for a republic. Umberto had expected to win and initially refused to accept the result, citing irregularities. As Italy had been split along north-south lines in the referendum, there was talk of him proclaiming a monarchy in southern Italy. But in the end he relented and went into exile and into history as the May King. His reasoning is not entirely clear, but it does appear that he wanted to avoid a civil war. The Republic repaid him with a constitution which banned him and his heirs from entering Italy and abolishing royal titles. Umberto went into exile in Portugal and died in 1983, still protesting about his exclusion from Italy. Umberto had a son, Victor Emmanuel, who is still alive in his 80s. Not a man to pander to public opinion, he worked as a banker and arms dealer, and famously said Mussolini's shameful race laws were, quote, not that bad. If that wasn't enough, in 1978 he boarded a neighbouring yacht to retrieve his yacht's dinghy, which he thought had been stolen, and ended up shooting a German teenager dead. He admitted to civil liability and was lucky to avoid a murder charge. There was also a dispute with his cousin, Amadeo Duke of Aosta, about who was the legitimate claimant to the Italian throne. The claim was that Umberto had abdicated, not only for himself, but also his descendants, and if that wasn't enough, Victor Emmanuel had barred himself by marrying without consent. In the category of you couldn't make it up, it ended with a punch up at the wedding celebrations of the son of the King of Spain. This report is from The Guardian. Meanwhile, Victor Emmanuel's son, Emanuele Filiberto, born in 1972, cut a much more sympathetic character. He's appeared regularly on Italian TV, and I remember him in the 1990s as a regular guest on the football programme Quelli che il calcio, as a Juventus fan, what else? He couldn't be in the studio with other guests because he was constitutionally banned from Italy, which as excuses go is a pretty good one. In the end, and encouraged by polls which showed around just 10 to 15% of people favouring a monarchy, the Republican politicians relented, and in 2002 the constitutional ban was lifted. Victor Emmanuel and Emanuele Filiberto returned to Italy, and there is sometimes talk of the younger heir founding a royalist political party, although this is yet to materialise. I wouldn't rule out anything these days, but it seems highly unlikely the Italians would want to resurrect the old monarchy even if Emanuele Filiberto is not without his charms. In the meantime, enjoy your pizza margarita, and why not connect with Emanuele Filiberto on LinkedIn? I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please do subscribe. In the meantime, I'll see you soon.